Brands is a reputed footwear retailer with a solid presence across consumer segments and products for all occasions. It operates on a COCO model, which means company owned and company operated across all of its four formats, whether it's Metro, Mochi, Crocs or Walkway. Its financial strength and brand presence can be compared to two leading listed footwear players, Bata and Relaxo. Metro posted a solid set of results in the December quarter, indicating strong pent-up demand and consumer sentiment. Its strategy to accelerate store expansion, increase uh, international tie-ups and scale up online business would further strengthen its position in the organized footwear play. While yes, there will be near-term headwinds in the form of rising COVID cases, we have seen strong recovery by the company given solid Q3 results. Additionally, organized players that currently make up about one third of the entire footwear market, they are expected to gain market share from unorganized players. So like Bata and Relaxo, we believe Metro qualifies to be in the list of quality stocks to be owned by investors. COVID-19 had affected store expansion. In almost three years, between March 2020 and December 21, Metro opened 125 stores compared to 85 store additions in FY19, which was a pre-COVID year. However, Metro plans to accelerate store expansions from the start of FY23. It aims to open 260 stores between FY23 to FY25. As per the company, each of its store formats have a huge runway for growth and store openings would be spread across all the brands. Metro has been working to improve profitability in the times of COVID. It closed about 46 underperforming stores in the last two years and surrendered leasehold of additional storage facilities in order to save costs. Furthermore, it has rationalized its workforce and has renegotiated packaging and other raw material arrangements with vendors, resulting in a much leaner cost structure. Metro's margins, if you look at it, improved by 230 basis points in the first nine months of FY22 compared to pre-COVID FY20 levels. Margins were better despite a similar revenue run rate of the company. The management has stated that margins are expected to be better than pre-COVID levels on account of a better cost structure. Metro Brands emerged as a partner of choice for international footwear players that are aiming to tap the fast-growing Indian market. It has successfully scaled up Crocs in India with exclusive business outlets going up from 96 in FY19 to 175 in the first nine months of FY22 period. Metro recently gained exclusive rights to sell the FitFlop brand in India. It will retail FitFlop footwear in its own stores, set up EBOs, which is exclusive business outlets, and also sell to other footwear players. Metro is looking for more international types to enhance its business further. With increased consumer preference for online shopping, Metro is also looking to scale up its e-commerce business. Each of the four brand formats which I flagged off earlier have their own website. Uh, Metro also sells through third-party uh, websites, whether it's Mintra, Flipkart, etc. While it derives about 75% of its e-commerce sales from third-party sites, policy of product pricing lies with Metro, which ensures minimal discounting to retain brand strength. Metro's e-commerce business, if you look at it, has scaled up from 2.5% in FY20 to 9.2% in the first nine months of FY22. Metro can be compared to Bata and Relaxo in the listed space, like I said, given their strong brand image, profitability and balance sheet. Comparing FY20 performance, Metro, though lower in size, has slightly better net margins as well as return on equity compared to both Bata as well as Relaxo. Also, it has lower working capital days owing to higher credit periods from suppliers. Now, all three players have a strong balance sheet and broadly comparable margins as well as return ratios. Of these three brands, Relaxo is expected to post industry-leading earnings CAGR of about 19% between FY20 and FY23. Metro and Bata, meanwhile, are expected to post 15% and 10% earnings CAGR respectively over the same period. Metro reported its best ever quarterly results in December 2021, which was the first normalized quarter with least amount of COVID restrictions. Led by strong consumer sentiment and pent-up demand, Metro's revenue grew 59% by Y and 38% higher even on pre-COVID basis if we compare to Q3 of FY20. EBITDA and net profit grew 70 and 53% respectively on a year-on-year -year basis, driven by margin improvement owing to better product mix and cost control measures. Now, with the surge in COVID cases and restrictions in various states, Metro store operations might get affected over the near term. However, given aggressive store expansion plans, more international tie-ups and possible inorganic growth opportunities, they all collectively point at stronger earnings growth once business operations normalize. Organized players like uh, Metro are likely to gain from market share on the back of rising incomes. That will be a key factor to watch out for, apart from increasing brand consciousness and disruption in operations of unorganized players amid times of COVID. 
The footwear industry has a huge proportion of unorganized segment which highlights the strong growth opportunity for organized players. Metro's earnings growth over FY20 to 23 as well as valuations based on FY23 projections are at about 20% premium to Bata and a similar level of discount to Relaxo. Like Bata and Relaxo, Metro is a reputed player with comparable return ratios and healthy growth visibility going forward. If you look at the stock, it has run up sharply by about 30% in the past week post its Q3 numbers and we believe it may cool off a tad. Metro meanwhile is trading at a PE of 69x, its FY23 projected earnings and we advise long-term investors to accumulate the stock on declines.